Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. For this video, I'm going to show you how I made this Grecian inspired Olympic cake for an order at work. This was for a birthday party, I believe. Um, everything on here, almost everything is edible and there's a lot of sculpting going on. So there's a lot of details to go over. Uh, so this is going to be a slightly longer video. But first of all, I am going to show you the topper. That little, what would you call it? The bust, the Grecian God bust that I had on top. This was a silicone mold that my boss had purchased. And all I did was melted down some chocolate and I poured it in, poured about halfway full, um, tap out the air bubbles and then continue to fill it and tap out the air bu bubbles, put it in your refrigerator, sorry, in your refrigerator until it's firm and then very gently release it. And the stand, the base that this is going to sit on is just fondant. I rolled it out and left it very thick. That was probably about a half an inch, if not a little taller, thick. And I did two different sizes because this mold, the, uh, the bust was not as big as we thought it was going to be. You know how that goes. You order something online, you even look at the measurements and then you get it and you're like, well, that's it. So we needed to bulk it up a little bit. So we did this little stand and I just added some details around the outside with a Dresden tool and uh, poked some little... Well, we just wanted it to look stylized. So, um, like it was supposed to be that way. So that's why we did it that way. And I just set those to the side to dry while I did the rest of the cake. And I'm making the arch. I'm going to call it the arch because I don't know what else to call it. It's not an arch. What would you call that? The pillars, the, the top part for the pillars. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to call it. So I'm using some quarter inch um, foam board is what that is. This is one of the elements that's not edible, but you have to have something that's going to have some stability. And I didn't want to just use cake boards because those wouldn't be strong enough. So I'm using, using this quarter inch thick foam board. And I just used two different sizes to make my circles. Use whatever you have. Um, I just used two different uh, board and a um, one of my acrylic discs. And this is modeling chocolate that I used. This was store-bought. I prefer um, the homemade kind made with candy melts. I guess it's actually called candy clay. But I had this modeling chocolate, so I was going to use it because I needed to get it to look um, ancient, aged. And that's a little easier to do with modeling chocolate. So I just added a little bit of piping gel um, on the foam board to get the modeling chocolate to stick. So I just rolled it out in a horseshoe shape just to um, make my job a little easier when it comes to applying it. It's already in the shape. And I'm just using my fingers to get it to wrap around the sides. Now, since this is going to look aged, don't worry about getting it too perfect. Because it's not going to be. And that's intentional. That's how it's supposed to look. And then I'm just using my straight blade to remove the excess around the outside edge. Make sure you get that piping gel on the sides, otherwise it won't stick to your sides. I'm just using a variety of tools. My um, fondant smoother and there was, oh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're sculpting tools. You can see it there. Oh, what's that called? I don't know. I can't remember. I will put it in uh, the description box where you can get these sculpting tools. And I did a thicker chunk on top because it's supposed to look like two layers of stone, really. The top one being wider than the bottom. And I aged it up nicely and set it to the side to firm up a little bit. And I'm just stacking my tiers. I didn't show you the prepping of the tiers because you've seen me do it a hundred times. And like I always say, it would be a very long video. This was already four hours worth of footage that I had to go through. <laughs> I don't want to do more than that. So I just left that out. And then I just used some buttercream to attach them to the uh, top tier to the bottom tier using some bubble tea straws to as our support. And now I'm rolling out a little bit of fondant because I'm going to use that on top of the board on the bottom. I always like to, when I'm using the cake drums, to put fondant over the top. I feel like it finishes the look. I feel like it's, it's now your job is done. You know what I mean? It's um, not, 
taking the quickest way out. A lot of times you'll see me do these orders at work, and because of time constraints and whatnot, um, a lot of times we just add a ribbon, but I prefer to add the fondant. And then I use a toothbrush. Oh, here I'm adding the texture to that modeling chocolate. I did need to let that firm up before I did this part. Um, that's a clay sculpting tool that I'm using to just add texture, and then I used a toothbrush that's only being used on cakes. I don't use it on anything else. Now I'm putting our statue, our, our uh, bust together. And to, since this is modeling chocolate, to get the toothpick in there, I just heated the end of, um, of my tool, the metal tool, and, and so it melts the chocolate so that the toothpick will go in there easily. And I had stuck the two pieces of fondant together with just water. Now set that aside. This was a two-day process, so that had plenty of time to firm up. And now I'm just using buttercream that is colored with, I believe, Latte by Color Mill. You could use ivory. Anything with um, that ashy undertone to it is going to be good to add some texture and some more aged to the, um, the buttercream. I'm just using a wadded up paper towel, just kind of spackling it on there, not trying to keep it real regular and you want it to be irregular because nothing ages completely the same. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and to make the Olympic torch, I just used, as you can see, um, ice cream cone. And I'm just using a smaller serrated knife to gently cut that shape because it's going to sit on the edge of the tear. And I wanted it to not stick out so far. And to get it to attach, it's easier if you have that little cutout in there. And then I'm wrapping it with fondant, and I just coated the outside of the cone with some more piping gel to get the fondant to stick. I just wrap it around and then cut off that excess. Make sure that your cut edge is the side that's going to be against the cake, not on the outside. And now I need to add some strips to make it look more like the torch and less like an ice cream cone. So this is just more of that fondant. Just cut some strips and then I'm going to attach those around what will be the top, what looks like the bottom right now, with a little more of the piping gel. You can use water to attach it. The piping gel was still just sitting there and it works too. So I just went ahead and used that. But water would work just fine. Now this needs to be set aside and dried also. I do not show that because why would I? <laughs> but once it had firmed up a little bit, that didn't take too long, it didn't take overnight, maybe an hour or two. Firm enough to put the airbrush, the gold on, and that's just luster dust, gold luster dust mixed with Everclear. And I used my cordless airbrush that I will add a link to, and there is a discount code, guys, if you would like to purchase one of those airbrushes. Check out the, the uh, video description for the link. And this is just wafer paper. I just cut in those teardrop shapes. Not teardrops. What would those be? Oval shapes? Lemon. They look like lemons to me. Long <laughs> lemon shapes. And I'm just airbrushing again with the same airbrush. Yellow. And then some red on the tips. And where the red and the yellow meet makes kind of a, a little bit of an orange tint to it. And I just set those aside to dry. And now I'm making my pillars. I'm just using... Bubble tea straws. I coat them with some piping gel and I wrap the fondant around it. Same kind of thing that you did with the cones. Cut off the excess and smooth your edge. You can add a little water in between the cut edges if it makes it easier to smooth it. And I like to use my fondant smoothing tool to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And cut off the excess. And you're going to want to set those aside to dry also. And now I'm adding some shape to my flames just by using my steamer and holding your, your um, wafer paper away from it a little bit. So it's just in the steam a little bit. Let it start to warp a little bit and combine one end because that's what's going to go into the, um, the torch. 
Now, I didn't show this. Uh, there's, there's a lot of footage I didn't add here. I had a silicone mold to make the, what are they called, balusters for the pillars. And, um, yeah, a silicone mold. I, I'm going to try to remember all of the um, links in the description for all the products that I used. There's a lot. And I also didn't show you how I, that I made an indentations around the pillars to make them look more pillar-like. I just used a long skewer and pressed in the pattern. And then I used more skewers stuck into that chocolate as extra support for the top of this design element. And then stuck the top part on all of them. There are five of these, I believe. I wanted, originally I was just going to do four, but the weight of the piece on top needed more. So I added another one in the back. And I tried to get them to press up against the cake a little bit for a little bit extra support as well. And then I'm attaching the, I keep wanting to call it a cone, but it's our uh, torch base bottom with some buttercream. And I am inserting some toothpicks in there to anchor it in. Now, when you have elements that aren't 100% edible on a cake, as I always say, just make sure that you communicate with your client and let them know so that they know to remove those pieces. And that's just a rolled up piece of fondant and some leaves. All made out of fondant. There are lots of leaf cutters that you can purchase. If you don't have that, you can just roll it out into like um, another lemon shape, flatten it, and add a line down the middle with a Dresden tool. It's a really easy way to make leaves. And I'm just painting the fondant gold with the same paint that I used uh, on the, with the airbrush on the the torch base. I think I added a little bit more luster dust to thicken it up a little bit. Because if you use the same consistency that you use in your airbrush, brush, which is very thin, it's going to be very streaky and you're going to have to do more than one coat. So I'm sure I added some more luster dust. And my friend Lisi, who you might have seen there for a split second, made the circles for me for the Olympic sign. And she also made the leaves. I just added some buttercream inside of the torch base, and I'm just sticking those in there. However, they are going to fit and um, look more like a flame. I played around with it for a little while. I suppose I didn't have to show you all of that. <laughs> It's a little late now. The editing is done, guys. Just watch me struggle. <laughs> Just shows to go you that it doesn't always go smooth for me, too. And yes, I got my words backwards on purpose. And to add some more aging to the, the columns and the top of the columns, I'm just using, what did I use? It was food coloring. It was brown food coloring mixed with just some Everclear, I think. And um, put it on with a brush and then used a damp paper towel to remove the excess on top of the surface. So that you're left with a little bit of stain on the fondant, but um, most of it in the low points, the, um, the pattern. And I kind of did that all over. I, I added some to the topper as well. So there you go, guys. Something some, totally different than what I typically do. But you guys really seem to like the sculpted cake I did, the popcorn bucket. Um... So I thought I'd throw this one in too, and I hope you liked it. And I'll do more of these if you guys are interested. So let me know. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.